my toilet has arrived and so has my bed good day welcome back and as you can see we're in the middle of all the wiring still so dad as much as he's done this a million times with aircraft this is the first time he's ever done it on a van so we're both novices we're learning as we go and the reason why you've not got a video so far is because how boring would it be just to watch us feed wire through conduits over and over and over again that's all we've done so far really just mark out on the walls where all the usb ports are going to be where all the lights are going to be and then you know there's wires everywhere so dad has done a grand job so far the control panel's going up here so there's a load of wires here and then this is where they all come down to because all the electrics are going onto this bench as you can see we fitted the electric hookup so we did the electric hookup last week but again it's not really enough for an episode so here is me wiring in the electric hookup it was very very simple really we just drew a template we jigsawed that out of the side of the van i filed it rush treated it as usual and then we popped it in with a load of silicone and then i siliconed the back of the screws on the inside of the van as well so that's the electric hookup done Woo! We've also actually finished the final bit of insulation as well. So the back door cards, we had these black panels at the bottom that we hadn't done anything with. So we took those off, cleaned inside, put the rest of the recycled wool into that. And I also finished off little bits like this around the fan. So there was a bit either side there. Just used the glue and sprayed that in. Where else have I done? I filled down, so there was some gaps around the outside of these as well. And I filled those in. Tick, job done. I showed you this in the short, but just in case you didn't see it, the door cards are back on and the one on the side. Now, we all know how much my dad is a legend and he's helping with the van build. But just to give you some perspective, he has a life and we're trying to fit around that. And also my sister is having her first baby, her and her husband are having her first baby. And he's got a lot of jobs DIY to do over there. So he's been over there sorting out a radiator this week. So I asked him, to, I was like, can we, you know, what are you doing today, basically? Are you free for the van? And he goes, no. He's like, today I'm doing nothing. He's been helping the last few days. Before that, he was with me again on the van. So he's working hard. So he's taking a day off today. So what I'm going to show you is the toilet. I've ordered a toilet. I want to give you a review on that, really, because I'm pleasantly surprised and I'm happy with my choice. And I picked this because of a YouTube video. So I want to try and pass on the love and help somebody else. Also, I got the bed. I ordered three of these from Ikea. I'll put the link in the description. So these are extendable. Eee, she says. Eee. Here we are. And they're hollow. And what that means is they're a lot lighter than actual wood. And they're stronger than wood, so they won't bow. So the idea is these are extendable. You can just pull them out and um, extend them to the width of the van. Pop three of these on. And then in between them, just bed sets. That's it, very simple. We've got these brackets to hold them on with. These things are gonna go on here, because this is how high the bed's gonna be. And then they just slot in. So we'll be building that in a matter of days. I can't really do anything. I'm waiting on dad at the moment. Because it's his first time doing this, bless him, he's like telling me that he's waking up in the middle of the night going, <gasps> I've not done this. Oh, I forgot about that. Oh, I didn't think of this. So that's why it's taking us a little while to do. We want to make sure we get it right. If anybody knows what they're talking about and sees something that we've missed or done wrong or could do better, please drop it in the comments and let us know. Because like I said, we're learning, we're novices. And this is another one of those jobs where we're a bit like, have we got everything? Are we doing it all right? Can we just take a second to appreciate how beautiful the light is in here? Look. <laughs> So before I show you my lavatory, I am going to give you a quick rundown of to what else Dad's done since the short. Spaghetti Junction. I used to work in IT and I used to hear that phrase all the time. But yeah, look at all of that. What he's done now, because we've added in the electric hookup, is he's put the 240 volts. So these thick white ones. Okay, he's fed them in as much um, conduits and... Um, wrap ties and as neatly as possible. Look how neat he is. It's so satisfying with all the, the zip ties and these little things here. 
to keep all the wires and then he's taped them when they've gone over the roof and everything. Like I mentioned before, this is where the control panel is. We have also marked them out so we know what they are. So they've all got little tags on. Water sensor, bed light. Yeah, so these are the 240 volts. So this wire basically goes down there to the batteries up, Fed, feeds across here, comes across the roof, down to here, down here, down here, down here. And this is sort of where the truma, the truma is going to go. So that's this, these thick wires. You've got, we've got black, green and red. So the green are going to be for my LED strips and the red is live and the black is just the earth the grounding wire so this is where my kitchen's going to be so we've got hob oven fridge the truma is now going to go here oh yeah i need to update you on my truma let me put you there so we originally wanted the truma to go in the back left so let's say you stood at the back doors and you're looking down towards the van the batteries are going in the top right underneath the seat so we thought for weight distribution, the truma should go back left. So front right, back left, evens it out. And then when we were trying to install the truma, we noticed that the four hoses where the heat travels were going to be facing in towards the garage. And then that would mean most of the garage would just be full of like these big heat vents. So then we decided to put it this side, which is what you saw in the last video down here. We marked it all out and everything. And then when the LPG got fitted, so Here's a little clip of that. Boom, that's what it looks like underneath. So that all got fitted, but, and I'm really glad they did this. They didn't finish the job because he said to me, with the truma where it was, that would mean there would then be gas pipes running through my garage and into my kitchen. So if it was there, like we said, the gas would be joined at the end here. A pipe would have to run all the way down here, across here, and then into my kitchen, which would then take up so much space in the garage. And I'm going to have a door here and that would have blocked all of that off. So he suggested to us, we, we move it back to the original spot. And then what that means is the gas pipe can literally just come straight and into the kitchen where it needs everything. It's amazing how much you have to change. I mean, God, it's because we don't know what we're doing. <laughs> but so they haven't finished that. And he's just said to me, once the trim is in and your kitchen's built and every, you know, you've got all the appliances in, ring us back up and they will finish off the job and connect it to the appliances as well. So even though we've got the LPG underneath, <laughs> there's still more to do on that as well. It's great how these things happen. There's a lot of patience uh, required for a van build. So I think that's you all caught up, which is why obviously it's not enough for an episode, is it? That's why uh, you didn't get one last week. So I'm gonna show you my toilet now, my lavatory. I went for Simplu after watching a narrowboat video on YouTube and this couple, I can't remember who it is, I'm sorry, but this couple, a gentleman couple lived on a narrowboat and they had a cassette toilet, I think, and they replaced it for a Simplu, it's a composting toilet. And their review basically sold it to me. I was, after watching their video, I was like, right, that's the toilet for me. If anybody watches Van Village, you'll know that the Nature's Head composting toilet is like the best one you can get. But it's over a grand for a loo. So I was just like, my budget, my budget can't, can't fit that. So then I did a bit more research and I landed on Simplu. And again, it's a British company. So woo, support British. It's always a bit difficult when you have to fork out several hundreds of pounds for some essential plastic. But I am so impressed with the quality of this. So I'm going to just show you my shitter. <laughs> Simplu. I mean, the name's pretty cool as well, isn't it? Here we are. She's very light. Easy to manoeuvre. This is the beast of a carbon filter. So I opted for a carbon filter so we didn't have to cut another hole in the side of the van. And the chaps that I watched the video for, they had one of these and they said it didn't smell at all, which is the main goal really, isn't it? So I opted for one of these. I think they're 38 quid. It's a lot bigger than I was expecting, but that was, lasts about 12 to 18 months. So we've gone for that one and we're going to try hide this in the garage to keep it out of the way as well. So we'll see. Now then, I'll put the lid on and show you it properly. 
soft close lid. Ah, oh, luxury. <laughs> so on the outside, you have um, a fan cartridge and this is where the carbon filter connects to. And you can choose whether this goes on the left, right or at the back. So it's customizable. We lift up the single lid and that's what it looks like. So this is the part where you do your number ones and this is the part where you do your number twos. This is a little guard that goes in. Um, if I remember correctly, you can also get anti-splash ones for gentlemen that may want to stand up. But I think anyone that comes in my van is just gonna have a sit down posh wee. So this bit pushes back. You do your business in there. You pull it forwards, put the lid down. There's a tiny gap here. So the fan, you then turn the fan on and it will suck the air out into the carbon filter to reduce the smell. And then you turn the fan off. So I'll show you, this comes out. That's the separator that comes out. And it's very hard to portray on a video. This is really strong, really sturdy. You just, you can feel the quality of it. You know it's gonna last a long time. And this is how it looks inside. This is your pee bucket. You can also choose a funnel option if you want, but I went for a bucket. And that's your, that's your poo bucket, really. So what else did I get with it? This comes with a lid. Once this is full, I think this is six litres. Um, so this is your alarm that goes off to tell you it's nearly getting full so you don't spill. And then you whack the lid on lift the handle up, pull it out, and then you can just go take that to a toilet, which I think is very well disguised. You can pop it in your bag. It's perfectly safe. And uh, no one really needs to know what you're doing. So I love that. I love that. You can order spare ones of these as well. But I thought if you've got an alarm, then I don't really need a spare one. And obviously space is very important in a van. So that's the, that's the wee wee bit. I'll show you what else I've ordered with it. So these are compostable bags. So the way Simplu have sort of given instructions for it is you put a normal bin liner in the bottom of the poo bucket the poop bucket then you use one of these compostable bin liners on the inside because you only have to empty it once every 20 to 30 days the uh, the poopy bit so they just recommend putting a black bin liner in the bottom just in case one of these starts to biodegrade before you've lifted it out and just saves you having any mess. So these are 25 litres, 26, 26 bags, and they last 30 days. So that's literally years worth of bags that I've ordered, which is brilliant. What else comes with it? Here is your little electric wiring um, for the fan. So there's actually an on off button, which I thought was really cool. So once you've done your business, you turn it on, the fan goes on for 10 minutes or so, turn it off and that's it. So that little hook, this one attaches into this here, this, that there. What else have I got? Oh, right. I ordered an extra fan cartridge. So this is a cartridge here. I ordered an extra fan cartridge because they were only like a tenner. And I was like, well, it's better to have a spare on the road if it runs out, then we have to wait to order another one. So I got a spare one of those. And then the last little bit we get, are just these metal things they're not they're not blue they're actually metal um so they go over these once you've fit the lid on basically and that's your that's your loo so i'll pop it back together for you but you can see they mark out they've got grooves underneath to stop things moving and they are customizable they take about four weeks to be made so just take note of that because they make them to order because obviously you choose how they're made so there's the base We've got the cartridge, we've got the poopy bucket, we've got the wee wee bucket, we've got the sensor and we've got the split. So let me just pop it back together now and you can see how it works. But it's very easy, very quick. I'm super happy with this choice. The reason why I chose a composting toilet is because I saw my dad have to empty the cassette one from their, um, from their motor home. I mean, wow, you've got to have a strong stomach for that. And then after doing some research, it was the smell and obviously the nastiness comes from mixing the two, the number ones and the number twos. If you mix them together, that's when it becomes very potent. You also have to change it every two days. Like theirs is full within two days. So I just didn't want to have to do things that often. So that's why I opted for a compostable one. Plus it's nicer for the environment. You don't have to carry around those chemicals 
the upkeep of this is a lot cheaper and easier in my opinion I don't have to find specific points to empty my waste because it actually can just go in a normal bin which is weird but also because it's compostable you can just throw it on a compost heap or things like that I can just take my little pee bucket to a public toilet or any toilet and just put it down there that's not a problem so that's why I opted for this one and I'm so chuffed actually this was one of those decisions that took me a while to make and then you make it you take the plunge and uh, yeah I'm dead chuffed so let me put it back together <laughs> <laughs> oh, who knew I'd talk so much about poop with you all, but here we go. The vital information, how much did it cost me? The Simplu was £539 on its own. Then I ordered the charcoal filter, which was £38. Then I ordered the peel arm, which was, I think, 10 or 15 I ordered a spare cartridge, which was another 10 and the compostable bags which was 15 and then it was 28 for delivery so it was it was a good 600 quid all in but i am very chuffed and very happy with it and it's still 500 quid cheaper than the nature said toilet one so i'm happy and i will give you obviously an update later on as a proper review once i've actually used it is it gonna take us four or five weeks to do the wiring and electrics yeah it's looking that way it's officially spring. I wanted to get this done by spring. <laughs> Lol, uh, that's not going to happen. Be lucky if I get it finished by summer at this rate. But anyway, here we are. This is where we're at. Wires, wires. Hopefully, in the next day or two, Dad will have the energy and we're going to actually start fitting the battery and the inverter and all the solar stuff and everything like that. We can now work out what we're going to do with the shower. Oh yeah, that's interesting. I think I'm going to get a shower tray made. Um, doing research, the plastic ones leak and crack. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually get a metal one made for the space, specific size. And we haven't decided that yet. The ideal solution with the toilet, I wanted it on like rollers so I could roll it back into the garage and roll it out into the bathroom. However, it doesn't look like we're able to do that because, um, for example, the wheel arch is in the way there. And we can't do it back this way because all the electric stuff take up that seat. So it was a nice idea, but that's not going to work. So what we're going to do instead is make the toilet detachable from the shower so I can lift it out when I have a shower. Because if you think about it, you're only going to be using the shower space for, you know, two minutes a day. It's not the most important thing to have. So I would rather have the extra space in the van than make the bathroom bigger. So what I'm going to do is actually I'll show you between this tape and this tape is the space I've got for the shower slash any more storage so if you think about it if that's going to stay stationary and not move the, I have the tiniest space for a shower so it just doesn't work that way as much as it'd be great if it would so I've seen loads of videos with you know people with the composting toilets where they just pick them up and lift them out when they want a shower sadly a problem these are the things you've got to deal with when you want to live in a van so what we're going to do now is create it so i can just detach this pipe and the electric for the fan lift this out of the way have all this space for a shower and then pop it back when i'm done and hopefully that will just mean that i can make the shower tray a little bit smaller and then i can potentially have some hanging wardrobe space next to it what do you think? Do you think I've made a good choice? I've made the right decisions? So weird that I'm like, I'm attached to a toilet right now. <laughs> it's a bit of a lull in progress, but once this is finished, then the building stuff's gonna actually start and that's when things are gonna go really, really quick. So I think all the preparation work is done, which is really cool. Thanks for watching. Here's a special thank you to my Patreons and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.